Hello guys, it is Teenage DC Fan back with another video, and in this video I will be doing a Krypton episode review for the episode titled The Alpha and Omega. So this is the season 2 finale. So quite a bit happened in this episode because of course we had to end off the season, and then also set up for the next season, which as far as we know is not happening because Sci-Fi just had to cancel it, and... Well, because of course they did. But let's just get right into the breakdown and review portion of this video. So, General Zod's plan to obliterate Wegther has backfired, and he's fuming just as Val make contact via Krypton's version of FaceTime, which might still be called FaceTime, maybe? I, I don't know. But Val's message for Zod is, Give it your book. Give it your best shot, because the Rebels are coming for him, and they won't stop. End transmission. And then Adam is still paralyzed from the waist down, and Nyssa is trying to, um, get his spirits up, of course, because, I mean, I wouldn't be happy if I was paralyzed from the waist down. And he said, he says he would have used the Zeta Beam, um to travel back in time before he became disabled, but it's not working. But then Nissa's wheels start turning. So while Adam is asleep, Nissa Nissa grabs the Zeta beam and then uses it to find Brainiac so that <laughs> then she could find her son Jor-El. Meanwhile, in the Outlands Uh sorry about that. Meanwhile in the Outlands, Jaina and Dev, their despair is growing. And they're getting a little closer for comfort. And then they smack lips. That's right. They make out. But the, the weird thing about this is that Dev used to be into Lyta. And Jaina is Lyta's mother. So I guess he's just... I, I guess Dev just likes the whole family. Um, because he's into both of them, I guess. Um, but... Just as they finish kissing, that's um, when Seg and the whole Rebel crew descend to swell the ranks of the forthcoming attack on Zod. Uh, support and Kandor for the Tyrant is waning, so it's a perfect time to stage a coup. Coup. That's a fun word to say. Coup. Yep, moving on. Now, in Kandor, General Zod is torturing a turncoat Sagittari for the whereabouts of the Rebels. And then, of course, he ends up telling Zod their location because, because he doesn't want to get killed. But then, well, Zod kills him anyway. But that doesn't seem like a fair trade-off now, does not Does it? Um, but that's why he gets paid the big bucks. And that's when Leida's plan to activate a faction of insurgents within Zod's ranks backfires when she hears about the tortured Sagittari spilling their whereabouts. So while the rebels plan to defend themselves against the imminent attack, Seg skims off to Kandor to deal with Zod. Now, after that, Seg confronts a, a rabble of Kryptonians and tells them what a bad dude Zod is, and how he manipulated them with with um, some somatic re reconditioning, I think that's what it's called. And then that's when Zod and the Sagittari come to break up the truth party. At that same moment, Lyda shows up and addresses the crowd directly. They're all, all a little shook, concerning they all saw her, you know, get her throat slit open and, you know, she got dead. Or so they thought, because that was actually just a clone of her. But stranger things have happened, you know, Brainiac, Doomsday, stuff like that. But after hearing Lyda and Seg and then Zod, the Sagittari put their weapons down. Because they ain't going to work on Zod's farm no more. Nope. Which means the only way to settle this little disagreement is fighting. Like, like one-on-one, -on -one, Seg and Zod. Going to throw down. So Zod gets in a lucky blow and knocks Seg out. And is ready to kill him. When Lyda intervenes take his place. It's mother versus son who will win. But I'll get back to that in a bit. 
you know, just gotta leave you hanging there. So meanwhile, in the Outlands, Jaina and the rest of the Rebels are waging all-out war against the Sagittarii. Lyda's mom, um, in particular, is kicking major booty. And Seg and Lyda finally get the better of Zod. But when Seg f wants to finish the job, Lyda won't let him. And instead orders the Sagittarii to call off the assault on the Rebels in the Outlands. They're saved, yay! Yep. So, rather than killing Zod, Seg and Lyda hook him up to the Black Mir and the Black Mercy stuff, so he can feed off his fantasies. Um. So, uh, yep. Then, um, then they'll keep keep him like that for as long as as it takes to keep Krypton safe. But it didn't work out so well for Lyda, did it? So Nyssa was transported to some strange planet where she finds an Omega insignia painted in blood on a rock. Then she looks up and sees Hawkmen doing whatever Hawkmen do up in the sky. Uh, most likely just flying, I guess. She's certainly not in Krypton anymore. Um, so if you don't know what the Omega Insignia is, it's basically Darkseid's logo. So, uh, I guess this means that Darkseid would have been coming to Season 3 of Krypton. Well, that is, if, if we get a Season 3, maybe, maybe not. And then, so it's possible that maybe she's on Apocalypse, and she... Um, and those were parademons flying in the sky. Um, or maybe they actually were hawk people, and maybe one of them was Hawkman and Hawk Girl, and maybe Hawkman and Hawk Girl will be in the show. If we get a third season. Um, so meanwhile in the Outlands, Jaina and Dev may have found a frozen doomsday that just arrived by airmail. And Val was able to fashion Adam some leg braces that, of course, came equipped with a jetpack. And Adam is still learning how to use them without hurling himself into the ceiling, w which he did a few times. And w with the braces and the jetpack now, he's basically wearing his comic-accurate suit. And um, so if you haven't watched this show and you've read the comics and you know what Adam Strange looks like in the comics, then that's basically what he looks like on the show. Now, if you're the opposite, you haven't seen him in the comics, and you've seen him on the show, then, you know, just go on Google, search Adam Strange, and look at images. Because Google has everything. So, the party gets an unexpected guest in the form of Lobo, of course, who has returned to Krypton to enlist Seg's help in locating Brainiac. Seg, of course, will is offering to help him if Lobo helps him reti retrieve Jor-El. That will likely be difficult as Brainiac has developed a fatherly affection for Jor-El because it sh literally shows Brainiac in his ship with, with baby Jor-El and he says, I am your father. No, he doesn't actually say that, but he says something like that. He basically says... Hey, hey, baby Jor-El, I'm your father. But, of course, he's lying because he's not his father. So, yeah. Well, anyway, this is my review for Krypton, Alpha, the Alpha and Omega. So, this is possibly, and probably, my last ever review for Krypton because... Of course, we are not going to get a third season unless it's unless the series is picked up by another channel because Sci-Fi has canceled it, but they are trying to sell it off to another channel or company or whatever. So, if we find out more information about like any of that, like if we end up getting a third season, I'll be sure to make a video about it. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And hope to see you in my next video so I can bestow all my details.